EPA Debris Meteorologist Bobby Martitur with your outlook for November 8th, 2022. It is election day and it is going to be colder than it has been over the last several days. Today and tomorrow, as you see above me, 52 to 58 is the temperature spread from northwest to southeast today and very similar tomorrow, 53 to 59 and it's mostly sunny each of the next two days. Today's video, we're gonna be focusing on subtropical storm Nicole and possible downstream effects from that. Actually, I think it's a little bit more than possible. It's likely that we're gonna have some effects from that as it passes by uh, at the end of the week. First and foremost, the Tuesday video forecast is proudly sponsored by Jay Evans Property Services, serving York, Lancaster, Chester, Berks, Lebanon, and Southern Dolphin counties in Pennsylvania and also Northern Maryland. J. Evans Property Services is a family-owned business that offers quality work at competitive prices. They feature premium landscaping design, sod install drainage solutions, as well as residential and commercial complete property maintenance. They also have two carpenters on board but specialize in decks and fences with over 15 years of experience and are offering 15% off any new deck or fence installed through the remainder of 2022. You can reach out to them at the phone number above me here in the video or schedule an estimate through their website, landscapingcontractorslancasterpa.com. They are J. Evans Property Services, proud sponsors of the Tuesday video forecast. So today, again, today and tomorrow, both mostly sunny days, and high pressure is going to be in control over weather. You could have put a big H right here. That is where the high pressure is situated. So very bright, sunny skies each of the next two days as a result of that. And we're going to have a temporary reprieve with temperatures a little bit cooler, uh, quite a bit cooler actually than we've had over the past couple days where many areas were in the 70s and uh, we will not be there today. Okay, so we're going to back it to, this is actually technically very close to average for this time of year each of the next two days. So we're going to take a, a step back to reality for a little bit and then uh, we're going to uh, warm up a little bit here by the time we get to Thursday. Now, <clears throat> off to our, in the southern part of the picture here, you can see this is subtropical storm Nicole, okay? And this is where it's expected to be this morning. And this is going to make a run at the Florida Peninsula and eventually up the coast. So I'm going to take us through the entire run here of the European model, which is very similar to what the GFS shows. It has it hitting uh, Florida somewhere between West Palm Beach and Port St. Lucie, okay? And then crossing over the state, uh, heading over toward the Tampa area. And it may cross into the water a little bit before it comes back into the Big Bend and then it accelerates northeast. The reason it's going to accelerate northeast is because we have this big, deep trough and cold front that's sitting out here that's going to pick this thing up and rapidly send it out in this direction as this comes eastward. So the whether we get heavy rain or not from this as uh, this moves up the coast is going to be uh, dictated by the speed of this trough. Okay, now the GFS was... A little slower with this, or a little faster, I'm sorry, with the trough than everything else up until this evening. It is now caught up and shows the same idea that the European model has. And for all intents and purposes, also the Canadian model has a very similar idea. And it all comes down to the speed of the trough to whether or not we would get heavy rain for the entire area or just parts of the area, maybe farther southeast of this front was a little bit faster. So the timing of this is going to be critical to that, okay, as far as rainfall but this is going to come in we think on friday afternoon showers at first right and then you get some heavy rain moving across the area as the low pressure moves right across our area and uh, we should get uh, some decent amounts of rain from this and this is going to go all the way into very late friday night into uh, maybe ending in some places saturday morning okay and then after that we clear out becoming partly cloudy later in the day here on uh on Saturday and uh, temperatures are going to start falling again because we have a trough behind here that is going this is the lead of the trough right here trough is back here the really cold air is going to come in on Saturday night and uh, that's going to give us some uh, very cold temperatures in the days that follow and that's going to stick around for a while we think okay so let's go through this a little bit here's what the National Hurricane Center has currently uh, this is the 11 o'clock advisory the, before I recorded this video. They had this out. So here is what the uh, track is expected to be. Now, this is a subtropical storm, not a tropical storm. There is a difference. It's just basically a hybrid system where it's kind of, it shows characteristics of both tropical, uh, of, of a tropical system and also um, a non-tropical low, okay? So, you know, kind of like a nor'easter, right? So it's a hybrid mix of the two. Uh, these can transition from one to another, so you can become a tropical storm or hurricane if it gets a 
uh, more organized tropical characteristics, which the National Hurricane Center is expecting to get to do as it moves across the Bahamas here over the next couple of days, actually has a reaching hurricane status right before landfall, uh, right before it reaches somewhere in that same West Palm Beach, uh, Jupiter, Florida, St. Uh, Port St. Lucie area, and then going off to the west near Tampa, and then curving off to the northeast, and accelerating rapidly as it does so. So the saving grace for us in our area with any remnant rainfall is going to be the fact that it's moving so fast that it's not going to have time to put down four, five, six inches of rain. It's just moving too quickly. Uh, could it if it was moving slower? Absolutely. But this is not the summertime when we have these uh, weak steering currents. This is now we're getting into well into uh, the middle of fall. Steering currents are a lot faster now, so we're not expecting this to completely linger around. So let's get over to... Uh, Another characteristic, this is the, this is the uh, visible satellite this evening, okay? And this is, well, not visible because it's uh, this is infrared, actually. This is uh, nighttime. <laughs> so this is what it looks like. This is not what you would li uh, like to see if you're looking for a tropical storm. Typically, you have a very <clears throat> convection wrapping around the center of this system here. This looks very disorganized. And that is a characteristic of a subtropical low as well. So a subtropical low, uh, they both need the warm waters of... Uh, beneath it to fuel it okay both subtropical and tropical the difference with a subtropical system is it doesn't necessarily need just that it could also uh, the clash of uh, warm and, and cool air masses also uh, allow this to intensify in a subtropical version of it okay so that just all that does is expand the wind field makes it a lot bigger and uh, but you'll have a very disorganized look to it and this is a very common characteristic of a subtropical low so that's where we are right now here is what the uh, for our area anyway this is what the uh, european model has for total rainfall and the gfs system is it, for the system is very similar okay and it has uh, generally uh, one and a half to two and a half inches of rain with some locally higher amounts in our area i don't think you're getting <coughs> excuse me as far as locally higher amounts you're not going to get ridiculously higher than what this is because again it's moving so fast but this is the total precipitation uh for this entire event and it's going to come in on friday afternoon we think with showers at first and then in the evening and overnight we pick up with a heavier rain moving through the area and this is going to end very early this goes all the way through uh 7 a.m on saturday and most of our area should be done by that point maybe a lingering shower in the fourth far northeastern areas and that's it and uh so we're not looking at anything just lingering and lingering and lingering so that is the good news okay if I switch this over to the GFS look this evening, very similar, very similar. Okay, so it's not much different here on the GFS as compared to the European model. So they're getting very close to what the idea will be with this. So uh, we're getting a, a pretty good sense of what that is. The other option here, the other thing we're going to talk about is the wind with it. There is the potential for 25 to 35 mile per hour wind gusts. What's shown here, a lot of 40, 40, 43s you see here uh, all across the map. These are peak gusts. So a lot of the common gust with this as it moves through from Friday evening and part of the overnight will be in the 25 to 35 mile per hour range, we think. A little bit higher right along the immediate coast will you have some gusts that are higher than that, 35 to 45 right along the immediate coast. But uh, elsewhere across the region, we're looking at 25 to 35 with some peaks that are going to get to maybe 40, 42, 43-ish, right? And that's on the uh, GFS projection with that so we will continue to watch this in the week ahead here but it's starting to look like we're getting closer in both the landfall point in florida and also the fact that it will accelerate northeast as this trough grabs it and sends it rapidly northeast it will interact with the trough a little bit which is going to squeeze out some extra moisture we think and that's why you get those uh, rainfall totals as i stated in one and a half to two and a half inches with some locally higher amounts possible but because it's moving so fast I don't see this being something that's going to drop four, five, six inches of rain. I just don't, okay? And it exits very quickly, either late Friday night or very early Saturday morning. Saturday is going to be a partial clearing day. Temperatures are going to start dropping as that front moves in, uh, most notably as we get to the evening and overnight. And then Sunday and Monday is going to be much cooler. Here's the warm temperatures here on Saturday ahead of it. And then here is the trough coming in, and that's going to stick around for a while. And you got some pretty chilly temperatures relative to average which are going to be uh, in some cases 10 or more degrees below average which means temperatures are going to be in the middle 40s for a good portion of the area so that's going to be like a 40 
say like a 42 to 48 degree spread we're looking at here on Sunday. It's going to be pretty chilly. Partly cloudy sky Sunday, mostly sunny on uh, Monday, but again, middle 40s. We're going to be sticking with that kind of mid 40s, mid to upper 40s for a while, it looks like, going through at least the 21st, if not longer. And uh, this is the end of the ensemble loop here. It does start, start to break down a little bit, and then you get another surge coming in here, and you're still hanging uh, at least slightly below average. But this, of course, is relative to the time of year. Uh, when you're out here on the 21st, average highs here are in the lower 50s to begin with. So if you're minus 5, you're still in the 40s regardless, okay? It doesn't have to be 10 degrees below average at that point because average came down by 3 degrees per week. Uh, and that's what we're dealing with here uh, going forward into the end of the third week of November. And uh, so where our focus this week is going to be on this tropical system, what it does, subtropical system, whatever you want to call it, if it does become a tropical storm, whatever. Again, that's a lot of meteorological semantics. I try to explain it a little bit. That's a hybrid system, but it's a technicality. It still has the same impacts. It's just a wider range of impacts as far as wind. It's more spread out. And uh, the wind and surge are more of an issue for the southeastern U.S. coastline, uh, including Florida, both sides of Florida, actually, and all the southeastern United States. Once it goes over land here, this is all uh, post-tropical at this point. So this is just going to be kind of like a nor'easter for us, okay? And it's going to have a you know, a few hours where it's pretty rocking, uh, with, you know, maybe a six-hour period within here at any given location that's going to be pretty pretty nasty conditions. But that most of that is going to be in the evening and overnight on Friday night, we think, before this pulls away early Saturday morning. I'm EPA WA meteorologist Bobby Marchers. That is your outlook for November 8th, 2022. Have a great Tuesday.